Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Ben Newman. I study coronaviruses and I'm going to try my best to answer your questions. Okay, so this is from Cat, and all, yeah, I, like I said, I, I like cats. Yeah, very fond of cats. All right, um, has there been uh, an update uh, in papers about ivermectin? Yes. Uh, since my last video eight months ago. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> my goodness. I've been doing this for a while. All right. Um, it seems to be making the rounds in social media again. It is making the rounds big time in social media as the next big thing. It is not the next big thing yet. <laughs> the vaccine is the next big thing. Take the vaccine. Yeah. Okay. So what is ivermectin? It is, a, I believe, an anti-helminthic. So it's uh, designed to knock out parasite infections. How does it work against the coronavirus? Nobody has any idea that I can see. But maybe in some tests, it lowers the amount of virus growth by some amount. What tests have been done? Some retrospective tests have been done, and we don't really like retrospective tests as much because they are subject to a lot of biases. Um, in a retrospective, um, doctors will decide who to give this to and who not to give this to probably depending on how sick they are. And so the ones that they give these things to, they will then track through and say that compared to some other data set, like the people before in this area or people in New York in March or something like that, um, that there was maybe some protection or people got out of the hospital a little sooner. You know, but usually with these retrospectives, the people they're comparing the test group to are not at the same hospital usually not under the same care or are getting a different variant of the virus at a different time with a different level of technological sophistication. And so I, I'm not a big fan of the retrospectives. Um, there is a retrospective out there that says that ivermectin may reduce the amount of virus, but not by a lot. And it may get people out of the hospital sooner, but not a whole lot sooner um, if they have sort of moderate COVID. The latest paper that I've seen is from it's either Bangladesh or India. I'm trying to remember. I just looked at it today. Um, anyway, that is a clinical trial, but it's only 72 people, if I remember right, which is really small for a clinical trial. On the positive side, it's placebo controlled, which means that they give the people either something, you know, placebo or a um, ivermectin, or they also gave ivermectin with. Um, Oh, it was a, either tetracycline or doxycycline, one of those uh, uh, anti-parasitics. And so they're treating this thing as if it's a parasite with unusual ribosomes when <laughs> COVID is none of those things. I think they're basically hoping that the side effects of this one weird trick to cure COVID are going to be enough to knock out the virus. I don't see any direct mechanism by which this would work, but it's not my job to say how the results are gonna be. It's my job to look at the results when they come out and then analyze them. So I looked at this study. It said that it could reduce hospitalization from 12 days to nine days on average. Uh, they didn't either look at or have enough data to look at deaths. I, in a sample of 72, you might not have anybody that died actually. Um, uh, so, um, but the things they left out of the paper were they didn't have the ages, comorbidities, male versus female distribution of the treatment versus uh, placebo groups. They just said that they're they're pretty similar. Yeah, <laughs> sure, take take my word for it. They're they're okay. <laughs> Which is not how science is done. It's not at all how science is done. Um, because you want to look over the data and there are times when somebody outside the study will catch something that somebody inside the study missed because when you are inside the study you are doing that study because you want it to work <laughs> yeah because that's, that's why we do what we do and so that's where peer review comes in and what i'm doing is like belated peer review it's already been published i would not have let it in without substantial changes but the damage is done it's out there and yeah um, so there's this one study and I think it's a piece of junk where, I don't know, I just don't think it's done well enough that you can actually draw any solid conclusions. The other thing they didn't do in there is a kind of a statistical, uh, just a sort of quibble, um, 
uh, normally, so they're, they're looking at comparisons between a couple different groups. And I don't think they did any kind of multiple comparisons test. When you're looking for something unlikely, see there's a 5% chance of finding a thing, and you flip over 20 different rocks, you're going to find the thing just by, just by chance. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be real or representative or useful. It just means that you flipped over 20 rocks. Yeah, and so something with a 5% chance of occurring will occur once in 20 times. It's like that. Um, uh, so it's no longer a thing with a 5% chance to occur. It's, yeah, uh, uh, you know, 5 times 20, yeah. <laughs> Almost 100% chance to occur within that time. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, it was a back-of-the-envelope Bonferroni correction. Yeah, not done very well, I don't think, but whatever. <laughs> um, so that is the update. I have no idea why people are so willing to believe nonsense science and it's the same people who are so reluctant to believe good science and i don't think it's got anything to do with the science necessarily i think it's more the like outsider insider thing like if insiders seem like they like it people that know what they're talking about then heck with those guys yeah I, you know Tell, tell me something that they don't think is going to work, but might still work. I, I, I figure it's something like that. Just a weird sort of human psyche kind of thing. I, I don't see any strong evidence that ivermectin is going to be particularly useful. It's been in a couple of smaller studies that I don't think showed anything, plus these two that I mentioned that have problems and might show a little bit of something. It's not the wonder drug that people are uh, talking about. I think some people are using it to like wash their hands as a sort of a topical. Uh, and th that's, yeah, probably not going to do anything useful on several levels. Uh, if this thing worked, it would be through manipulating the immune system after you already have the virus in such a way that the immune system would either attack you less or attack the virus more. And again, it's easy to say these things, but really, really hard to do them in anything like a clean enough way that you could actually get something through uh, approval. It's just uh, you got a better chance throwing darts at something. Yeah, it's, 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 and I, I would say that as a person who's bad at throwing darts. So there we go. Yeah, ivermectin, I'm not ready for prime time, as far as I can tell. Maybe someday, but I really think probably not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. And, uh, yeah, you are a yeah, finger on the pulse of the Facebook pseudoscience scene. I got to say, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, thanks very much. Uh, and uh, this is Ask Dr. Ben.